Punch it, Chewie. Punch it! <laughs> Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It's always uh, lovely to get in here and dig in each and every morning with you here in the feedback loop. It's Tuesday. It's uh, a rainy, cold Tuesday in October here in Chicago. Uh, so I am damn happy to be inside with you. Uh, we've got quite a few things to look at this morning. Like, just like there's a rhythm starting to, starting to take place. Rhythm is gonna get you. Rhythm is gonna get you. Uh, <laughs> yes, a little Gloria Estefan to get your morning started. Um, as I was saying, rhythm sinking in, setting in. Had three submissions like right at the bell. Um, Luigi, Shane, uh, uh, Rebecca. I see all of you. Thank you, Melanie, for the shout out this morning. I appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and jump on in because I think that it's uh, I think it's a damn fine way to just get ourselves started right away. Um, provided that I can, hmm, my transition's not working. That is so bizarre. Uh, let's go to scene two. Scene one. Transition. <laughs> manually having to make the transition this morning that's that's unfortunate all right so uh let's just hope that that doesn't uh that was really weird normally my open broadcast software is a little more responsive than that so i do apologize either that or my keyboard on my mac just died don't know yet we're probably about to find out as we look at shane's uh resume now shane is uh shane's busy working through the uh, career career mode and he's been uh, going through the uh, video series on career guidance. And we're sitting here really just optimizing his resume right now. Um, Shane, one of the things that I see right away, and I, you know, when you're writing on this, uh, uh, when you're writing, when you're in the middle of adjusting things, uh, sometimes things like this will occur. And... Obviously, I, I don't. I don't think you. I don't think you intend it for that to, to happen. Um, this is kind of collapsing together, and I want to make sure that we're looking at the right file. Uh, resume ten twenty two. Ten twenty two. All right. That, so th this is clearly the right version of the file. Um, as you can see over here, where I was setting up baseline, um, I had everything in just one box, so it was it was a little easier to control. Um, this is the sort of thing that you get when you, you don't have one box. Um, so this is clearly one box, and then that one, this other one, is another box. Um, aside from that, though, let, let's let's like let's take a minute to actually read what you have here. Uh, collaborate with stakeholders, uh, UX project managers, to uh, and UX project managers to determine optimization tests. So looks like we got some extra space here. Um, so you want to get rid of that. Um, oh, and look at that. It suddenly it like popped back into place. We must have some, oh, you've got like, I see. You've got, uh, so this was set to align middle. So if anything was going to like, when it changed in size, it was going to go up and down, which is all, you know, again, one box is better than two here. Um, but that's fine. We it just had some extra space uh, to determine optimization for test sites and areas, including uh, accessories, SMB product pages, uh, responsible for taking multiple AB tests through agile and development process, create it, test it, and launched. Um, I'm never quite sure what you mean here, so it could be create it, test it and launched or was it tested and launched it probably is basically the same thing i always go for the oxford comma though um because i want those things to be separate um personalization campaigns in multiple countries in ever gauge uh, we've also got like periods missing um i just add some periods in here if i add the period it's gonna knock it over um so just 
uh, just keep that in mind. These are tip these are basically sentences. Um, they are almost complete sentences. Um, worked with development and quality assurance teams to ensure all functional requirements for each test are met to ensure high a high quality customer experience. You know, this gives me a picture into the type of work you were doing. Um, you were doing refinements. Um, you were testing. Um, you were making sure that crap wasn't broken when it shipped. And that's a very valuable job. It's also a somewhat monotonous job because um, basically you're invisible in that role until something breaks and then and then when something breaks you have to you, you have to be the one that delivers the bad news to everybody um, so yeah that's that's a hard gig um, in looking at this there you know there's a couple of ways that we could go about organizing this and ooh, is this one you oh, okay so this is just group um, there's a couple ways we could go about organizing this, and I, th I think the the thing that I would encourage you to do is come through. Um, first of all, there's there's a couple things that I, I would do here. Um, I would copy this, and I want to go over to Grammarly. All right, and as you can see, I Grammarly. I need to restart Grammarly. Um, just yesterday, I had Grammarly um, editing that type um, slideshow that I put together. So we can come in the Grammarly, and I'm going to say it's confident, it's general, neutral, and um, Grammarly is going to give us some suggestions on your on your writing. Um, I'd probably come in here and say SMB and product pages. See, it cleared that up. And that's probably one of the reasons why I do it. It's Grammarly kind of berates me. Uh, it gave us a 72. And this is probably pretty easy. Um, it says collaborate it. I have collaborated. Or I collaborate it. Makes that um, a little better. Um, including so it's saying get rid of the semicolons there um, responsible for taking multiple A-B tests through an agile development process uh, ensure um, to prov um, okay uh, functional requirements for each test are met to provide a high quality customer experience or to ensure a high quality customer experience um, that's really interesting I, I think I think I think here I like ensure what it's focused on as it says ensure re appears repeatedly and I don't recall right away seeing it so that's what it is. Oh, countries yeah, I don't, I don't know what the hell it's talking about there, so I'm going to dismiss that one. But here, now we've we've kind of elevated this, and we've run it through, um, we've run it through Grammarly. So this is where um, I'm going to actually copy paste this. We'll work on it over here. I'm going to pull that back in. Makes it just a little bit, a wee bit longer. Um, but I still want... I still want this in its own box. Um, so it's a little easier to, to manage gonna do that thing which we don't necessarily like that's lotto light 10 on 12 that's easy enough to fix right now it's 8 on 12 so here's 10 on 12 um, 
I know you had it at 10. Uh, that's going to change everything, though. Up here, it's on 3. Um, I really don't mind it on 3, to be honest with you. Um, if, if anything, I, I could see... See, maybe looking at it on six. If you want it more, although it it, it wants to lock it wants to lock everything together, and that's because it's in the, it's in the same box. Um, but you can also force space to get you more between the two if you want to. But it tightens it up. It definitely tightens it up, and I can I can see why that might be an issue for you. Got, got a few more things here. Oh, yikes! Oh, um, we are a no no periods and bullet points. Oh, okay, got it. Okay. Sorry, things are so tricky. Okay, so you were thinking bullet points here. Got it. Okay, well, that, that makes a little more sense, um, to be completely honest with you. Uh, because as I was looking at it just a moment ago, I was like, you know, um, these feel like little blurbs with a lot of space in between. Once you say, hey, I'm putting bullet points over here to the side, it's like, well, that makes sense. Um... When you're talking bullet points off to the side, now let's come back over here. Um, yeah, let's come back over here. When you're talking bullet points off to the side, that kind of changes. Like, I'm not necessarily looking to up the grammatical score because it doesn't feel like, um, like that's as necessary. Um, I do wonder if with the bullet points off to the side if I can do I, I don't know how, if that will allow me to do it so let's do bullets here um, oh yeah I've, I've used bullets before and it, it's it's jerky let's uh I had another one here that was where was it simple bullets but simple bullets puts one in front of everything. Um, so let's see if simple bullets will allow me to just put it on the selection or if it has to be a... No, <laughs> it wants the whole thing. So in this instance, if you're going to put bullets on, it actually has to be. So just ignore ignore this because it just it just has to be this because otherwise it won't it won't take the bullet so that's a plug in simple bullets and too many what oh got it it's frustrated because it's saying oh you've got all these things selected so now we'll go to simple bullets and it gets you simple bullets um no big deal i would say that at this point you know, you're kind of in this spot where you essentially need to align with this. There may be some extra space here. You could also, um, this is something I was working with last night, uh, the bounding box, um, you can resize the bounding box to uh, be, to be fixed um, or grow vertically I thought, I thought it would collapse down um, but you got a you got a height here of 44 so long as that height is the same like here it's 46 um, it's 44 and 46 you know, so here it's 44 here it's you know whatever um, but provided that you could know get those things to align 
So there's that. There's that. At, so this starts at 378. Uh, or no, that's the width. Sorry. Um, this starts at 188. That starts at 143. It's got a height of 44, which means that it really ends at 187. So there's there's 188 two three that gets you the requisite three between that you had set up um, you know don't really like the way that spacing is happening but I'm, go I'm gonna leave it alone for right now um, I just want to make sure that the spacing here is is exact between the three, in the, the two. If you want to have three, now right now it's at three. If you want to have ten, because you've got it ten on twelve on ten, you need to give seven more to it. So instead of starting at one, uh, sorry, instead of starting at one ninety, start one ninety seven, and that gives you the ten between all of them, and that's that's focused on the box. Um, I would have to guess that the difference between the bottom of the box and this is negligible, but this is also this is also baseline, so it's trying to it's trying to give you extra space that would have been there for a descender. Um, and now we're just getting super nerdy into typography, but that spacing I know there's ten here between this element and that element, um, so. If you have to have two boxes because of the bullets, that would be a way to do it. Um, just make, just literally go in and pay atten close attention to your starting and ending points and adjust accordingly. Um, but know that you've got to have these ungrouped, otherwise the bullets will freak out. Um, as you're going down, uh, you beginning to run out of space down here so it's a, it becomes a situation where you're going to have to probably edit a line out somewhere and one of the things that I would do is I would I would go through here and um, collaborate with stakeholders and um, you know can you get away with project managers here instead of UX project managers maybe uh, but that gets you the line that you're currently losing down here and the only other issue I have is you're probably going to lose a line, if I had to guess, right there when you bring in bullets. And sure enough, you do. Actually, you lose two. Um, so just something to keep an eye on there. And for some reason, it looks like you had an extra space there. Um, web accessibility and best, comma, best. Wait. Lead in education workshops for UX members and web accessibility guidelines and best practices that's weird Some, something something looks like it got lost here in the translation um, so you probably want to go back through and edit that as well um, but I hope that's useful to you um, I, I know you're still working on this the other thing I would I would en encourage you to do is look at how this is structured up here at the top um, and right now there's a lot of space kind of floating around. Um, I would bring this into alignment and bring that up. Um, and then I'd find a happy medium for this phone number between but this allows you to have a much more aligned header than what you had before where this is just kind of all just fl floating around. Um, very minor thing though, not, not something I would really concern myself with greatly. Um, editing is more my, definitely more my jam and making sure you don't have things hanging out there like that or extra spaces, um, it's gonna be really helpful. All right, uh, let's let's jump into let's jump into Luigi's. Um, nope, 
that's not it. I had all the stuff previously loaded. That's Google Chrome. This is... There we go. Okay. Got it. It bumped me out of that when I opened up Shane's, uh, Shane's resume. Um, so here we have Luigi's um, user interviews. And first of all, I think it's no problem, Shane. Always welcome. Um, here we're, we're in Luigi's user interviews, and I think it's really important to get a sense for the depth um, that Luigi's went into on these interviews. Um, he's interviewing, like this is a stay-at-home mom, and he's, you know, it says he decides to order food delivery for food pickup based on how organized she is and if she has been to the grocery store also doesn't want to drag her young children out of the house has two young kids stayed at home mom one one child is two months two years old you're getting a sense of how life is for this particular stay-at-home mom and in that you're this really begins to set the tone for why the decision to use a product is made. It's not, it's not a, oh, the app, well, it's fine on my phone, or I like this user interface. It's, I don't want to drag my kids out of the house. And that's, and that's what prompts me to use this thing. But in that, it also tells you that this is probably a person that gets distracted a lot. Mom, 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 I, like, I, I'm, I'm a parent as well. I, I totally, I get it. I've never had two. I can't imagine. Um, so this, this is like, first of all, this is the hero, <laughs> and I thank her for her service. Um, but it gives you a sense of, of like, why, why somebody uses the product. Um, on average, orders out three times a week, and I can't believe it's not more. Um, one is going to a restaurant in person, sanity. Uh, the other two are takeout and delivery, expected. Um, typically orders dinner, not lunch. If she orders during the day, it would be um, it would be by herself. Um, so, I, I like the I like the the picture of why that I get from Carly. Um, choosing a restaurant, the experience, recent eating habits. These are these are all more how she goes about doing it. And I really felt like the way this was organized was really well done, Luigi. Um, when I get down to the other two, it feels like these have not been organized in the same way. Um, like, like, I don't have a a neat breakdown that helps me helps me guide guide through like if I'm coming through and reading reading them like, like having the headers for me could because I wasn't in the interview helps me see helps me kind of organize high level what I what it is I'm, I'm getting into here I'm just like holy crap there's a lot of bullet points so uh, so I would like you know I'm pretty sure that you conduct these in roughly the same same structure so I'd like, you know, because I, I see some stuff here at the top that feels like her life uh, for Jackie here. And, um, you know, packs lunch, gets lunch out every two weeks. Typically, it's not going out. Whole Foods or a hot bar. So this is somebody who's kind of in that, um, in that. I'm going to go to the grocery store nearby and get lunch. Client lunches twice a week. Eats at work schedule, doesn't really impact dinner, orders food delivery twice a month with their husband. Um, they use DoorDash exclusively. So it's like it, it flips, it flips from um, life to usage. And it seems like there's a break. Just some sort of header there would be, would be, uh, make this easier to consume. The, um, the other thing I would say is, you, know, you you have a lot of data that you've gathered. So here's the you know the three user interviews that Luigi's performed. Um, Luigi and I did 
an affinity mapping exercise last night. And part of going through the affinity mapping exercise is having these key data points ready to go so that you can place them on a board. And when you place them on a board, it's so that you can begin to see the things emerge. And right now, I don't have, right now you have a lot of bullet points here and you wouldn't want to put all of these onto a board for consideration. Every, every bit of, every step of the way, you should be doing some sort of localized analysis on what it is that you have. And right now at the, at the top of, like at the top of this document, there should be like 10 observations. From the user interviews, these are the 10 things that resonated, percolated out of that experience. And those things are what end up on something like this. Um, so Luigi and I, oddly enough, were working in Miro last night. And Miro's great, by the way. I, I don't dislike Miro. I'll, I'll take you right over here to Miro. Um, this is... This is kind of the affinity mapping exercise that that uh, Luigi and I were working through, and I was pointing out that we have, you know, we had we had several things that we could be pulling information from. Um, we we just pulled information from each other's um, uh, uh, competitive testing um, insights that we had because I, I I did the exercise before I released it back in July. So I took my data, he took his data, and then we threw it on the screen and compared it. But I, I hated how the sticky notes worked in Miro. Um, like I, I, I like Miro because I can just, I selected this template and it just gave me, it just gave me the, uh, the template. But it also was like very easy to just like accidentally grab things and drag them around. So I kind of went over here and made my own because I, you know, this gives me a priority canvas. I can, I have components here that I can pull in and place as desired. Um, you know, the, for me, ha being able to customize this in Figma made, after after using the Miro version, because I've only used Figma before, but I knew Miro had one, so we, we used it and I'm like, I don't really like the Miro version. Um, so I made, I made an, our own affinity map um, template uh, this is going to be added to the curriculum. Um, I'll also mention that you could use Miro. And Miro is like a purpose-built tool for this. It's just like typing in the... it does, Out of the box, it doesn't, it doesn't work the way I want it to work. You'd have to do a, some customizations to it. But there are some things that Miro does like extremely well. Um, affinity mapping just isn't one of them. Um, so anyway, I've uh, got this uh, priority canvas uh, affinity map for Figma. Um, that will be, you, you'll, you will find that in the curriculum um, as of uh, probably like 10 a.m. this morning. So anyway, um, Luigi, back to you. If I can, if I can stay focused and you know, let's be honest with you. Let's be honest with you, each other. You know it's hard for me to stay focused. Um, on this, Luigi, I just high-level overview observations that sum up all three interviews and um, I, I know you're you know like this you were writing up your observations I'd like you to break out those observations into the the sections like you did here I, th I think car the way you set up Carly is the way to go like choosing a restaurant experience recent eating habits like having those breakouts here make it a lot more approachable because this is something that in your case study you'll link to. Like, here's my user interviews, go look at them. And as you, you have to assume that people that might click on that, um, that are doing hiring, they're gonna be much more receptive to something that's organized like this versus something that's organized like this. You know, and it's, it, it's the smallest thing. It's like, it's like three labels. It's not even a, It's not even a major change, but it makes all the difference. So uh, that's my two cents on that. I think you did a great job on it. Um, just needs a small bit of refinement. All right, 
so we're humming right along. Let's go ahead and hop into Rebecca Barr. She's sent over a few questions. Um, you know, we did a detailed like pick apart of her site last week, and the good news is is we got a lot of stuff fixed. Uh, the better news is that she found some more stuff, and um, you don't want to find stuff for ages and ages and ages and ages, um, but you definitely want to you definitely want to go through it more than once. Um, that is that is something I truly believe. You want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're sending out into the wild. You're not just looking at it once going, yep, that's good, and then sending it off on its way. So she's got a few things uh, here. It says on mobile, the headers are very cramped. How can I fix that on the footer? I like the copyright to be left aligned. Some of this uh, stuff is um, very minor. Uh, on the bio page, excuse me, um, how do I break the intro text into a bit about me? Uh, so that a bit about me goes to a separate line on the bio page for mobile my picture is missing interesting how can I get that to go under the intro text um, for mobile the headers on my bio page need a better line height uh, how do I set write a separate media query from line height okay All right, let's jump into it. Um, she's got some screen grabs here, and that's definitely, definitely cramped. Get that. This is just like left the line. I would adjust the spacing though. If you're gonna be left the line, I would, I would even consider making these left the line as well. But you'll, you'll see that when we do it. Um, here, a, you're wanting a bit about me. Uh, to be on its own line, that might be hard uh, because a bit about you probably need to just make this smaller, um, make this smaller on mobile. Uh, let's see here, journey in the product design. That yeah, that's pretty simple. Ooh, that's that's weird. Stretchy, stretchy. Okay, good thing to notice. Uh, let's go through and. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this in VS Code. I have Lizzo stuck in my head. I apologize. Um, let's see. Let's start with that index page, um, and we'll get go. Oh, actually, get status. Get pull origin master. I want to make sure I'm working with Re uh, Rebecca's latest work. It's up to date. Let's go live. Let's see what we got. Do 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 do. All right. Um, about. All right. It's important. Let's. Um, actually, let's just put it in this. Uh, not responsive. Let's put it in. Just go with the X. Okay, uh, that's not great at all. Uh, let's go over here. Well, that kicks over all together. Um, why does it do that? Well, it's cramped there, even on a, even on a massive phone. So that's that's not great. Why has the the Kindle Fire HDX here? I have no idea. Um, let's fix it for this. Hmm. Um, Mm, this is not great. Um, we've got we've got several things that need to be need to be worked on. Uh, first of all, I want to inspect this. Does this have a? Is this forced? Yep, it's forced, and that's why you can't force it. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting to know. Let me just drag it like that. Um, let's do some, let's do some magic. Let's fix this header first. Um, this header, if we just jump into it here. 
we want to we want to adjust these ULs. These ULs have um, it might just be the width here. So the width here on your main nav is 300 pixels, and it's set it's set up on flex. That's not a big issue, um, but you've got to you've got to like leave some room for yourself. Um, so yeah, it looks like 70 would probably work okay um, on that main nav. Uh, it's flexes. Flex is basically saying, okay, logo over here, everything else over there, and that's fine. Um, actually, it's probably this wide container. Yeah, wide container display flex, space between. That's all. That all makes sense. Um, good job utilizing that. Um, but let's go ahead and, and just write a media query, main nav. We'll, we'll target main nav, and we'll target, you know, the 530 and then we'll set the width to 70. So let's come over here to style. Let's find main nav, main nav, main nav. There it is. Um, and what we really need here is we need a media query. So we're gonna grab that 768. Let's come up here to main nav. Make sure, I'm just gonna put it with it. So there's not an issue. We'll grab all of main nav, but we'll only focus on width. And here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make this a little more flexible and say 70%. Um, and then we'll say 530. And the reason I use 530, I've had people ask it before. I like to stretch out um, beyond just the typical phone um, because I, I, you know, I. I know that 468, I can I can target that and, and hit most of the phones, but I like to go a little wider just to give me some coverage for things that I can't necessarily see. Uh, now, if I refresh, it works. All right, so let's go down here and fix Octa while we're at it because Octa, Octa unfortunately is not gonna not going to survive that way on a phone. Um, this break tag is killing you. You might be able to do something else. I'll, I'll give you a few hints here in a minute on the intro. Um, so now that intro works, although Okta is still pressing to the top and bottom. So let's get ourselves down here to the Okta Hero. Okta Hero. Um, it has a 60% vertical height. And that's what's killing it at the moment. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I struggle. I struggle with this one because you know the seventy percent help it. Yeah, it does actually. Um, so this is another like, do I write a media query for Octa Hero? Certainly could. Um, and we've already got this. Let's find Octa. So there's Octa Hero. Octa Hero actually does have a media query. It has a couple of media queries. Um, so here is where I would probably say, all right, we'll just go in and adjust the height for mobile so octa hero we're just going to make it a little larger and that gives it sp space to breathe um, important though is we need to look at this also for the desktop um, because octa hero this now is is too wide for um, for the setup that she she has, she wanted it to break, helping people run their bu their businesses better. She wanted it to break here. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is come through and say, okay, well, intro. We'll make intro narrow. Um, so let's find intro. So there's intro, and for intro. 
Um, I will, oh, I, I know how I'll do this. I will set up intro to have a width. So we'll say width 50%. And that's, that's something that's only going to work with limited, like it doesn't, it does not work here, but it definitely works here. All right. And maybe 50% is too harsh. Maybe she wants it more like 70%. Helping people run their business better. That gets you back to two lines. Okay. Um, three lines is bad, but two lines is fine. Uh, now, when we go back and look at this though obviously that's creating a problem so we have to give her back her width here uh, so I will say uh, you know 768 um, I'll do this on mobile um, but we'll target intro again and we'll just say all right hey intro here your width is going to be 100% And this allows this octa to exist in the same world as this octa. Um, and instead of using a break tag, we're just using width. Um, I do think that, that this could use some adjustment in size. Also, I think it should be darker. So I'm going to go ahead and make a executive decision here, Rebecca, that like as you move into that gray, like this is really where you want to come in and say, you know, this needs to be easier to read. All right. Um, and that allows you to maintain this style, which is fine on when there's no background, but when a background gets in there, that's when you, that's when you've got a problem. Um, let's see here. Spacing here is less than ideal. I see, I see why it got that way when you added that button. It's not on our immediate list though. So I'm, I'm wanna, I wanna focus on my, this immediate list um, cause that's what's concerning. Um, okay, so you've got this request about the footer. That's that's easy peasy. Um, you wanted it to be over here instead of centered. That's fine. Um, footer. So footer. Um, it just text align center left done um, and that should just take take place everywhere throughout um, come back you've got to remember where where you were at that's Luigi this is Rebecca oh yeah okay so this text is just too big for mobile um, we kind of looked at that concept already so let's go to about um, yeah, this is just too big and it's, it's like stretching off to the side anyway. So we need to target whatever style it is. So this is bio hero. There's a lot, there's a lot of stuff on here, but bio hero. Um, the question is like, that picture of you is somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Um, let's see if it will illuminate itself for us. Okay, so it's there. What happens to it? Does it just go to... In does it just go like to infinity and beyond? It's like it's gone. It looks like it collapses down like the sun setting or like a moon, like like an asteroid running away from running away. Um, okay, we will have to take a look at that because I'm not really sure why that's occurring. But first of all, we're gonna take care of this type. Um, so this. H1, bio hero H1. Let's find the bio hero. <laughs> I 
I saw something called biohack and I'm scared. Um, <laughs> uh, let's target biohero. That, yeah, that's literally the only one. So, if I came through, I said, all right, bio hero. Bio hero H1, font size. I'm just gonna say two rem. See, and I'm just gonna, I'm just throwing it in there. Let's see what we get. Um, well, oh, it's because it's by or her. Sorry, there we go. Now it's significantly smaller. Um, so that's probably too small. Let's go to four. That's too big. Let's go to three. That's just right. So now I got to figure out why, why this construction is working the way that it is. So this is a grid. Oh, okay. Well, duh. Um, you've got grid set up here. If I just change this to one FR, you should be right there. Yay! All right, so that's that's the problem. There is it wasn't set up to allow. Uh, it wasn't set up to be responsive. So we'll just throw this in the same. Actually, we won't throw it in the same media query because we we don't want that to happen until mobile. Because it probably works fine on tablet. Um, Five thirty. Uh, let's check that though iPad. This is, so this is the iPad size, and uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's cute even. Um, but here, it's, that, that's no good. Uh, uh, so let's go ahead and, and set this up by our hero. Uh, grid template columns. Yeah, just one FR. Not 13 FR, Chris. One FR. One FR. Thank you. This one tight. All right, and da, 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 and there you are. Um, probably could use a little space on the bottom, but I'll let you sort that out. Um, looks like you got the class. You actually looks like you got a little bit of padding down there on on that. So um, I might just add a bit more. Um, again, I'll let you sort out what you want to do there. Uh, you were concerned about line height here. And I can totally see why. Let's inspect that. That's an H3. It's just an H3, a good old H3. Um, seems like anywhere you use that, you're going to want more line height than that. So line height, uh, 1.8. Yeah, that's too much. Uh, 1.3, 2, 1. Yeah, I'd go with 1.1 or 1. I think I think we'll do 1.2 just to be conservative or um, yeah we'll do 1.2 so let's go to let's find an, the h3 where that's at uh, so we got section h3 we've got h3 light um, I think this is just what we want here uh, I'm gonna reorganize this because it's just a little buggy right now so color up there font I want font family here above font weight. And I got to put a semicolon there. And we got to delete that. And delete that. And family size weight. P comes before T. And then width is after all. Or no, actually, sorry. Line height is right here. And you may be wondering, Chris, why did you bother to reorganize this? And it's because it's alphabetical. It's just a little easier to scan. Um, you know, this is alphabetical. This is alphabetical. Typically speaking, when I'm writing code, I, 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 especially CSS, I try to 
alphabet put it in alphabetical order. It's just easier for me to mow through. I also use search a lot. You'll probably notice I don't I don't I don't go up and down the whole the whole uh, file looking for stuff. Um, I just use search. So uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Hey, that's way better. Actually, let's refresh. Make sure it's way better. It is way better. Way better. I like it. Let's go with that. Um, we fixed that. We fixed the image. We fixed the line height. Ah, yes. Let's figure out what the hell is happening there because that's no good. Um, um, okay. Looks like I got a break. We got that break tag still in there, so we'll, we'll get rid of that. Um, weird. So Rebecca's seeing something that I'm not seeing. So let's do ourselves a favor. Let's go to the actual site. New. No. This is it. Okay, so it loaded. Definitely took a minute to load that image. Um, yes, let's take a look at this. Let's inspect it. All right, we're gonna come down, 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 down. Yikes. Uh, okay, let's take it over to Chrome. Browser test this. We will browser test this. Um, right now, I'm not seeing that, um, Rebecca, and that may be why I didn't spot it the first time around. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not interested in sorting out what it is, though. Um, well, that's just too narrow. Oh, and of course, this this doesn't have the changes that we just put in. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at a couple things here. But it's not... The problem I have is I can't replicate it. If I, I can't fix what I can't replicate. Um, so... It does not have a set. Typically speaking, Rebecca, when I see this happen, it's because there is a set height on the image. Like if, if I said you know, width is 31, but height was 50% or 90%. Oh, excuse me. 130%. I can't even, I can't even force it into doing it. Uh, a thousand pixels yeah there we go okay so I could, if I had some sort of set height like that I could force it to do what you what you saw but I don't see a set height here so it makes me wonder if you if you spotted the issue and you were able to fix it um, but right now as I look at it I don't have anything that says that's the problem. So I'm gonna have to kick that one back. Um, if you if you could give me a little more insight into maybe the browser, because it looks like you're on just a mobile browser in iOS. Um, you know, I, I will I will go hop on iOS and take a peek at it to see if it's a Safari thing. Um, but being that Chrome and Safari are built on the same uh, underlying architecture, what works on Chrome should work on Safari. It, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, but we, we can definitely take a look at it, okay? Um, so, sorry I can't help there, 
but I'm sure that we can have a further conversation about it. Um, yeah, and as always, I need to remember that the changes that we did make, so get status, we updated a couple files, get um, add dot, get commit, feedback, loop, suggestions, get push origin master doodles um that and that is gone so this morning we've covered a lot of ground um looked at um looked at affinity mapping looked at the distillation of information as it goes into affinity mapping shane we took a look at your resume and some of the some of the things that uh you were working with there with alignment um, also, simple bullets is probably the way to go. Um, just Figma plugins that are nice and handy to have. And then Rebecca, we, we were able to drill down on a lot of what you had, but that last one, that last one, I wasn't able to replicate it. And I can only fix what we can replicate. So without further ado, I'm Chris Courtney. This has been the Feedback Loop for Tuesday, October 22nd. I believe it's the 22nd. Anyway, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll chat with each of you tomorrow. Take care.